Hello ladies and gentlemen, Gabesta here. This is the raid guide for Normal and Heroic Chromahog. Probably the easiest of the in-wing bosses that you'll first face. Um, it's mechanically fairly simple. It's mostly a matter of proper positioning, uh, good healing and cooldowns, and then a minor personal avoidance and you know mechanical prowess <laughs> to deal with the rune mechanics. So let's get started. Now for raid composition, you want the standard two tanks and mix of damage, not really anything special, but you should really consider having extra healing if you have it available. Uh, of all the fights in Heroic so far, um, including attempts on Black Hand, this fight is easily the most healing per second required in the zone. It's a ridiculous amount of incoming damage, and that's even if you utilize you know, some methods that allow your group to stay closer together and use more cooldowns and whatnot. Uh, it's just a ton of damage. So uh, given that, and the fact that the Berserk is a 10 minute timer, which is quite lengthy, you can really afford to stack a bit extra healing uh, where you otherwise wouldn't need to. So my rec recommendation is one extra healer than you normally use if you you know, have someone that can fill that role. You probably won't need the extra DPS because of that 10 minute timer. Um, but the extra healing will be very useful. Now the tanks need to be stacked on top of one another, off to one side or the other, and at least 15 yards away from other raid members. This will deal with the Fists of Stone mechanic, which targets the current tank, does physical damage, pretty heavy damage to that player, as well as another player within 15 yards. This can target only two people at most, so obviously the tanks being stacked at least 15 yards from others, uh, ensures that only those two people are hit. The other mechanic is Warped Armor, and this is the primary tank swap ability. It's a debuff placed on the current tank that reduces movement speed and also increases physical damage taken quite significantly. Uh, this is a kind of annoying ability because the cooldown on it can sort of uh, lose precedence or become lower in priority than some of the other mechanics that the boss wants to do. This means that uh, sometimes you'll see Warped Armor casts uh, maybe 13 seconds apart. Other times they'll be um, as infrequent as 25 to 27 seconds apart. And this is just because the boss is doing something else at the time that he wants to use it, using one of his other more important abilities, essentially. Uh, because of that, it's kind of difficult to plan around. So I think the best way to deal with Warped Armor is to plan it around the Rune of Grasping Earth phase, which we'll talk about you know, later how to do that. But during this period, it means that tanks uh, are able to get away from the boss for a while and not get stacks of warped armor for a bit. Um, this gives you some cooldown time because the debuff itself is one minute in duration. So I think the best plan is after, so at the start of the fight essentially, uh, or after a Rune of Grasping Earth phase, uh, the fresh tank that doesn't have any stacks yet will go up to two stacks of warped armor. Then the other tank taunts. That other tank then can be prepared to go up to two or three. Sometimes you get three, sometimes you only get two. Um, so if they get up to three, just be aware of the extra damage they're gonna take. And at that point, the Rune of Grasping Earth phase should trigger again, and the first tank should be able to finish their one minute duration at that point and repeat the, price, the process essentially. So that's my recommendation. But like I said, the warped armor timer is not precise at all. So sometimes the number of casts between phases will fluctuate. So let's move on to the boss's mechanics that affect the majority of the raid. First, we have slam, which uh, is mechanically similar to other abilities you've probably seen. It deals physical damage to the entire raid, uh, but the damage is lower the further away from the boss you are. So this means it's very important for all melee tanks and melee DPS included to be at maximum uh, melee range throughout the fight so that this damage is mitigated as much as possible. For non-melee, um, this damage is reduced significantly if you are just back a few yards. So we initially were trying to, well, we tried a few different strategies, but uh, you can kind of see here that the basic placement that the raid is using for range players is out about, uh, say, 15 or 20 yards from the boss. And this reduces the slam damage quite a bit, even from just being, you know, 
that distance instead of melee range. Uh, for tanks, slam is going to hit very hard when they start to get uh, higher stacks of warped armor debuff. So that's basically the time that your tanks want to use their own mitigation cooldowns. Uh, if they have two or more stacks of warped armor, for example, particularly if one of your tanks is getting up to three, that slam is going to be a brutal hit. So make sure you utilize those cooldowns. It may be possible we didn't test it fully, we didn't have enough time or need to really, but it may be possible for a tank with high stacks to temporarily um, run away from the boss, so long as they time it so that the warp armor will not hit the other tank. Um, and that way, when the slam actually hits, because you have a cast time to react, the damage on that tank would be lowered. But again, it's probably a gimmick you don't need to worry about. Rippling Smash is another frequent ability. Around every 30 seconds, the boss will face a random direction. It does not seem to be targeted on players, as far as I can tell. And he will shoot out as a wave of, of rock, essentially. Uh, you can see where it's going to be shot based on his facing, his direction. Uh, so this is a critical ability for everyone to dodge. Um, you can just see where he's facing, sidestep quickly, get out of it, and then proceed back to your normal position. Because if you get hit by this, in addition to some of the other abilities that are going to happen, uh, you probably will die, at least eventually. <laughs> so uh, as, as normal, check the description for weak aura to help you warn for stuff like that if you want. But it's a critical ability that everyone avoids it. Now you may notice in the footage that very frequently there are these little yellow discs that uh, we've seen on so many fights now and these are called reverberations uh, these are shot out in random directions starting from melee range with the boss every time the boss uses either slam or rippling smash which we both talked about both of those because these are both fairly frequent you can expect um, a wave of these reverberations around every 15 seconds or so throughout the fight uh, except for the special phase which we'll talk about in a moment uh, the main thing to keep in mind about the reverberations is that they do uh, fairly moderate damage, but they are single target. Uh, so if they hit one player, they will dissipate immediately. This technically means that you can hide behind other people if you want to sacrifice somebody. Um, but generally speaking, it's going to be more important to um, just avoid them. But you may have seen a moment ago, so I was able to use a cooldown, and I just stepped in front of the raid just to make sure I soaked it because... I knew I wouldn't take very much damage from it. So if you have the ability to do something like that, you can certainly help out others by stepping in front of them. The final primary ability that you'll see frequently is Stone Breath. And this is probably the most damaging or dangerous ability just because of the pure damage that it deals. This is the one that really requires heavy healing. Um, around every 25 seconds in the standard phase, he will use this. He will also cast it if he cannot find someone in melee range to attack. So this only really should apply after the Grasping Earth phase if you don't handle that quickly enough. Um, he can start to chain cast it. But other than that, he just usually casts it around every 25 seconds on his own. Uh, during this period, you take very heavy physical damage to the entire raid. You cannot avoid it in any way. So you need to do your best to help mitigate uh, the healing requirement. Uh, we did this by trying to stack up raid members as much as possible without getting too close to the boss and therefore increasing our slam damage. Um, but otherwise, Stone Breath is just something you have to deal with. So finally, we move on to the runes. And on Heroic and Normal, there are only two types. The first is Rune of Crushing Earth, or the Red Rune, because I'm a simple man and I like... I like colors, yay! <laughs> uh, anyway... The Rune of Crushing Earth will target a random ranged player, and it will spawn a red rune there, which is surrounded by two large hands. You can see them on either side there, ready to smash somebody's face. Now, the important thing to note is that when one and only one of the runes of Crushing Earth, the red runes, exist, it doesn't do anything. It's dormant. But the moment that a second one spawns, they will both activate and close their hands and, you know, yay, do claps and stuff. And of course, they'll smash anybody between them. So 
when you get the first one, don't freak out. It's completely safe to be near it. It doesn't do anything bad to you. But when that second one spawns, you need to make sure you're not between either of them. Um, that's pretty much it. They're very easy to avoid. Depending on your positioning overall, you'll probably just need to move forward or back if you're a ranged player. And melee should never be affected, really, since it won't be in their area. So saving the best for last, we'll finally talk about Rune of Grasping Earth, or the Yellow Rune. And this mechanic is by far the most, most interesting mechanic in the fight, but also the most difficult to uh, get used to. The basic idea is the boss will channel Rune of Grasping Earth for a short period at the start, during which time he summons a number of small yellow runes around the room. Uh, you can see that the players then spread out and find a rune for themselves only. And when the cast is complete, the runes will grasp the first person that they find standing on top of them. Uh, however, note that each rune can only get one player. So if two people are standing on the same rune, it will only get one person, which means that there needs to be some form of, you know, system or just people paying attention to deal with these. After the actual rune cast is complete and the grasps have gone off, the boss will spam thundering blows for five seconds. This does very heavy physical damage to anyone that is not uh, held down in a rune, or basically grasp at the time, and it will also knock that player really high into the air, uh, such that you pretty much will die on fall damage if you don't have some way to mitigate it. So, the basic idea, generally speaking, is that everyone in the raid should get in a rune by themselves, uh, be held there during the entire thundering blows, after which point they can freely escape and proceed with the fight. And you may notice that the Grasping Earth hands have health, health bars. And this is how you escape from them, essentially. You can kill them, and as soon as yours is dead, you will be released. However, it's critical that you do not release yourself before the end of the Thundering Blows cast, because you don't want to get hit by the end of that and knocked in the air anyway. So the best method that we found is they actually have quite a bit of health. So players with uh, you know, sort of a wide area of effect attacks like Balanced Druids, Rep Paladin, stuff like that, could generally freely attack, um, while others were just more careful about not killing their own rune too too quickly, or their own grasps too quickly. Um, however, you don't want to wait too long, because if you're, you know, Grasping Earth is full health, and the phase is basically ending, you're going to have to spend a lot of time breaking yourself out. Uh, that said, everyone should help everyone else out in the raid, of course. The exception is probably tanks, because they want to get back into melee range quickly. But uh, it is important that all of these grasping hands die as, as fast as possible once the thundering blows has ended. Now, the critical thing to practice is making sure that people don't overlap with one another when they're trying to get a rune for themselves. Uh, generally speaking, the closer to the middle you are, the better, because it's easier to, you know, not only get heal range, but of course area of effect uh, damage and all that stuff. But that said, the best method we found was to generally s assign our range players to try to get runes toward the back of the room, toward the entrance side. The healers would then be able to get central ones so that they're in heal range of everybody. And the melee, of course, get the front ones closest to the boss since they will be nearest to that front when they start the phase. You'll also notice that there are a couple raid markers on the right side, yellow and, and orange in particular. And these are markers that our tanks put out to help them find that they're assigned runes. So the important thing to note is that the rune locations during this phase are not random. They're always in the same positions every time. So if you want to get really fancy, you could even plan, you know, I'm going to go stand exactly this spot every time. Um, or, you know, next to Bob and Elizabeth or whatever it is. But the point is you can plan ahead of time. And once you know where one rune is going to be, it will always be there. The final thing to note is that while a player is grasped, they will be taking moderate damage over time. Um, this damage is nowhere significant as the uh, damage from Thundering Blows. So it's still preferable to be grasped instead. And you also avoid the knockup, but just make sure that you break yourself out or players out as soon as you can after the thundering blows. 
Uh, you could also sort of avoid getting grasped at all if you have a way to survive the Thundering Blows damage. So you can use immunities or something like that. Uh, I know that one of our mages was doing that where he would just not step in a rune and when he gets shot in the air he just ice blocks and then he just comes back down and waits for it to end and once the Thundering Blows is over then he's free to go about his business. So you can do stuff like that as well but most people will be grasped and need to practice that. So the final thing to think about is Frenzy, which occurs at 30% health on the boss. And this, of course, is the period that you want to use all your, your big DPS cooldowns, bloodlust, and all that stuff, and burn them down. Um, depending on the timing, you want to watch your boss mods. I wouldn't recommend using your bloodlust just when you're about to enter a Grasping Earth phase, because it will largely be wasted just because of the downtime and spread and all that stuff. You can't really speed that phase up primarily because of the thundering blows. You have to wait for that to end anyway. So, um, you know, you can see it, for example, here, what, even though we were in frenzy going into this, we just elected to wait until this phase was over and then we bloodlust and get, you know, full duration essentially out of it. Um, but just plan for that accordingly. Frenzy, of course, increases the damage he deals. Uh, he also will use his abilities more frequently, the um, shorter cooldown versions. So just be aware of all that. Anyway, that is it. That's the raid guide for normal and heroic chromog. Mostly it's about, uh, like I said, massive healing, uh, positioning properly to help mitigate a lot of the damage, um, avoiding the avoidable things if you can, uh, tanking, tank swaps when appropriate, watching your stack count, and primarily just getting used to uh, spreading out for Rune of Grasping Earth. So, as always, good luck, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. If you hit that subscribe button right there, I will grasp you all night long. Eh, well, at least for a couple minutes I will. Then we can spoon.